I'd come down here and try and see if I can get a picture. And so my goal is to try and get a picture of the mountains in the background. At the foot of the mountains, there's gonna be the houses. And then we've got the water and we've got the shoreline here uh, and all this kind of rocks giving us our foreground interest. But there's also grass growing and a tree on the left hand side. And I'm gonna try and incorporate all of it. I think because there's no out, absolute outstanding feature in the picture, there's no like outstanding mountain or particular thing to focus on. I think in those instances, you can go two ways. You can either simplify and go really minimalist and just go for like one thing. Um, but I often feel that those pictures always just come out a bit like, eh, all right, yeah, it's nice, but sort of, so what? Um, or you can build in enough elements into the picture that it starts to feel like maybe you've got something more as a whole when you add up all of the elements in the picture. So what I am doing is adding more stuff in. The point of this was, wasn't to just take the picture and say, here it is. I wanted to show a couple of things because what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus bracket and focus stack in one picture. And I'm going to try and do it in the most straightforward way possible. I think I'll get away with it with four shots, maybe six. Okay, so I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Also talk you briefly through the composition as well. So I'm going to show you on the back of the camera. I'm just brightening it up a bit so you can see more what's going on. But the first shot I'm going to do is I'm going to focus like down here in the foreground. Yeah, I think this might be six shots in the end. And I'm looking at my histogram. So I'm going to do a bright exposure and a dark exposure for here bright and the dark exposure for further in and then one on the background a bright and a dark exposure as well so on the histogram for the bright exposure i want to make sure that the lower end of the histogram isn't clipping so i'm going to brighten up that exposure just a little bit more to here let's take that picture on a two second timer so a third of a second f8 iso 100 and then i can do the same further into the picture touch there to focus take the shot and then one for the background let's go for there take the shot so if I combine these if I focus stack these together what I'll get is my bright exposure which is exposing for the shadows from front to back now I'm going to touch close to the foreground again and I'm going to darken down I'm looking at the histogram now, what I like to do with the histogram is I like to sort of unblock that first quad that first section in the histogram so i go a little bit darker than just going say to about there i like to go a little bit darker than that because the highlight recovery on digital is never as good and so now i'm going to take this picture here so this is a 13th of a second f8 iso 100 the only thing i'm changing is my shutter speed now i'm going to focus in yeah about here on the foreground take a picture Get it over a point of contrast. Now you might be wondering, but hey, you're touching your camera all the time. Doesn't that matter? No, as long as you don't do something that could be a catastrophic movement. Um, tiny changes or tiny movements in the camera are not going to affect it because when you align them in Photoshop, the computer's gonna analyze it and align it all for you. So it's not gonna be a problem. The only thing is if you knock the camera in a way where you've knocked it a few centimeters or inches either direction, then obviously you wanna start again and do it again. Taking all of these exposures, focus bracketing and exposure bracketing shouldn't be complicated. The reason I only did two exposures here uh, one light and one dark is because the dynamic range, I can tell it just by looking at it, isn't that strong. It's just I want to get the shadow detail, but I want to make sure that I've got the highlight detail. The sun is setting directly where we're looking into. So this was really just about making sure I can preserve those highlights. Just want to talk a little bit about this composition to you. The thing that I was really trying to get to work for me, because I didn't have anything that was like an instant impact in the picture, was the foreground. Because I think if you don't have anything that's going to make people go wow as soon as they see the picture, but you want them to look at it and perhaps roam around and, and see things that are there that are smaller details, it's to have a foreground that can lead you into the picture. It, it kind of suggests to the viewer, hey, go into the picture and look around a bit. 
And the way I did that was by trying to find some structure and some order within the ground that was there. So I lined up the rocks and this bit of grass that you see, and they almost make uh, a slight arrow, but I hope it's not obvious enough that people will consciously see it, but some co subconsciously people pick up on those kind of things and it leads people into the picture. And I really liked the kind of textures and the way, because these rocks were wet, that they were shining and glistening. And that just gives them more of a 3D kind of look. I think that really helps pull the viewer into the picture. Whilst we have got this diagonal going from right to left in the picture, I think that also helps lead the eye towards the tree. But again, the tree isn't a particularly dominant feature within the picture. The idea with the rocks on the left, you see the way they kind of stack up like this. With the framing that I was doing, what I'm hoping is, is that that kind of catches the viewer as their eyes drifting off to the left because you've got this diagonal going from right to left, which is almost taking the viewer out. This, I'm hoping, is catching people's eye and kind of guiding them back round into it again. So when they look at it, they're, they're, they're kind of guided to wander around into the picture from right to left, then left back to right again, and then look around the picture. There's lots of little small details and textures, and this picture is much more about texture and the environment and the mood than it is about saying, hey, look at this stunning scenery. I think that the picture captures this area really well. It's very cold, it's very damp and wet. It's one of those quite gray coastal areas. It feels like this, but it is also full of textures and details. I had considered cropping the right hand side of the picture in because there's not that much going on on the right hand side. But I also feel it gives a little bit of a balance to the left hand side which has a lot going on. I'm still in two minds about this, about whether I'll crop it in a little bit tighter still, but I kind of feel like it balances quite well in the end. I had played around with going into a vertical and even changing the aspect ratio to make it a little bit more square, but I felt that Losing too much of what's on the right makes the picture so busy that it doesn't feel that inviting anymore. It just starts to look cluttered. So I think that the, the slight negative space that's on the right hand side actually helps settle down some of the kind of busyness and chaos that's going on in the rest of the picture. I certainly noticed with the Canon RP, it's really nice having a tilt screen when you're doing landscape photography. I think in particular, that genre really, really benefits from any type of tilt or flip screen because you can get these low angles. And when I do landscapes, I often like to shoot quite low down um, and then not having to sort of squat down as much or get as low into the ground, especially in rocky, muddy areas. It's much nicer if you've got a tilt screen. So it really benefited from that. But the camera's dynamic range is, a, is something of a little bit of a challenge. But if you're prepared to bracket and do these kind of things that I've been doing in this video, then it's not really that much of a big deal. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment, I'll try and get back to you. And if you're new, found this useful, maybe consider subscribing to my channel as well. And I hope to see you again in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.